it's that time again for a sales day video and also i want to talk about selling during the holidays does that change the way you sell does it change the way you approach your customers let's discuss that a little bit Yo, 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 YouTube. It's time to take a look at the sales from over the weekend. We had a really good weekend. A lot of orders to pull, so we're gonna get to that real quick. Also talk a little bit about ways to take advantage of the holiday season to get some extra sales. So the first thing we wanna start with is what's on our order list here. I just sold these two, like within the last two minutes. Um, two of these Cincinnati Reds Team ASG cards. Those, of course, are in the set boxes down there, so we'll pull those after. We've got a gold Barry Sanders. One of our wild card stuff, so let's see if we can grab one of those. There it is. Gold Stat Smasher, sold for $6.99. Alright, then we've got another ESG card. This is David Bednar. Uh, it's in the set boxes, so we'll pull that after. We sold one of our jersey cards we just picked up. Uh, 11, 18, 7. So we got to find 11, 18, 7 in here. Here we go. The bag's in the boxes. Unfortunately, I had a lot going on this weekend. We had a lot of people over to the house. And uh, finally finished the arcade. I'll show you that maybe in a future video. Here it is. Keith Van Horn, game used jersey card, sold for $4.99. Um, so I did not get to any of my bag moving and stuff like that um, to continue with the inventory migration type activities. So we'll have to work on some of that this week. Now it is a holiday week as well, but I will be working most of the week because that's kind of how it is. Okay, here we go. Um, another stats masher. This one's just an Emmett. A base one should be right in the front here so these are not skewed um, which is good I love pulling the non skewed cards on this thing I'll have to do later we got another ESG card out of the set boxes so, so far we haven't really pulled much out of bags all right then we've got a Bryce Harper uh, home run derby this is a tops update card I believe 11 12 big 18 so that's gonna be down here 11, 12, big 18, here it is. Okay, so baseball has still been my best seller. Football just has not been that, um, had that much pickup yet. There it is, Bryce Harper. So I'm glad I've really upped my stock in baseball and done a lot more buying in baseball. Um, so that I can not have such swings in sales times. All right, here's a Josh Hamilton refractor out of May 2, 5, 2, 24, 2. 2, 24, 2. Here we go. Another Josh Hamilton. There it is. Nice there. I'm sure I got that out of a quarter box or something, so a bad sale at $4.99. We'll finish pulling this order and then we'll start the topic for today. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about different ways to take advantage of the holiday season to get some sales. Last year's sales were very, very strong for me. So plan to kind of do the same things this year. Uh, Bryce Harper again, we need here. Oh, actually I'm gonna need one of these too. Yeah, so I need one of those. I think they're the same, yeah. And then I also need a Tops Bryce Harper. There we go. Bryce Harper stuff does pretty well for me. That was nice. Pull two cards out of one bag. I always like that. 
And then another one from May, May 8th, big six. Oops. Got you tipped down a little bit. Sorry about that. May 8th, big six. Come on now. This one's in here a little bit. There we go. May 8th, big six. Where's Mr. Harper? Got a Harper fan here buying out. There we go. Bomb Squad from opening day. And then we've got the Heritage one, which we just did. There's a couple Mookie Betts cards in here, too, that sold. So we'll do that next. Uh, Mookie Betts, Tops Chrome, 10. 19? Is 19 in here? I don't think so. I think it's an extra. Yep. 10, 19, 5. Here we go. So Chrome Mookie. So I had uh, a good amount of orders over the weekend, more than I kind of thought I would. Usually this is kind of the last slow weekend as uh, everybody's sort of switching over into Christmas and winter mode and Baseball's officially done because all the MVPs have been announced and all that stuff. And then um, sales really start picking up, especially if you're a big football seller. Uh, 5, 22, 24. And we talked a little bit in the last episode, the last video about sales seeming to be slower. Um, and while I... Uh, agree with that to some extent I still have more dollars sold than I did last year so I, I'm still seeing growth at least and that's really all you can ask for all right and then one more Harper 2018 Bowman take it back to October drawer for this October 23 October 23 big seven Oh, this I was in this. There it is. I pulled a couple other braces out of there. I didn't see this one. All right, so some strategies to take advantage of holiday sales, and and some of them are going to seem pretty obvious, and they're probably things you're already doing, uh, such as offering coupons, uh, making your coupons maybe a little bit more robust than you normally would. Eleven thirteen two. 13.2, here we go. Saquon Barkley, his stuff has been flying off the shelves. He's definitely the exception in the football sales. I mean, there we go. Score, Saquon, rookie. Picked that up for 30 cents. Sold for 4.99, so nice deal there. Um, but yeah, you want to take advantage of the coupons. Maybe make a special holiday coupon. You know, if you normally just send out a generic coupon and don't include a message with it, maybe include a little, you know, um, hey, thanks for being a customer of mine. Here's a here's a coupon, you know, to help you with your holiday shopping. Take 20% additional, 20% off. You know, whatever you're going to do. Here it is. Saquon Elite Draft Picks. And that one also, oh, that one sold for $3.99. I got four of those for a dollar for Elite Saquon rookies for a dollar at the national, and uh, you know, make the just make the coupon a little more personal and a little special to try to help boost that holiday uh, traffic. You got to remember, everybody's getting coupons and save and extra discounts and you know all that stuff this time of year. So you got to try to. At least try to personalize it a little bit that's going to be your advantage over like a big box retailer or something um try to do that with it all right then we've got a nintendo card nintendo super power magazine 327 bought a bunch of these a while ago they've kind of been plucked here and there i've made good money on them 27 24. this one yeah, it's all these um, cards that came out of Nintendo Power Magazine back in the 90s. I tried to find some of the magazines. They're virtually impossible, so I just buy, like, stacks of the cards once in a while. 
and have them on hand and that does pretty well for me. So which one is this one? I've got ones, a couple with a, a little bit of damage, so I want to make sure I grab the right one. It looks like it's this one here. And that's all for five fifty. It's good money on those. Oops, get in there. Um, all right, so we talked about coupons. The next thing I would probably approach would be uh, sending out, uh, setting up like a, a site-wide discount. And what I mean by that, or a store-wide discount is maybe a better way to put it. So just do like, whatever your prices are, take a flat amount off every single card. Um, so coupons are usually like quantity discounts and that kind of thing. But this would be, you know, 10% off everything in the store. Just do a, you know, holiday sale kind of thing. Uh, that tends to get some stuff moving. You got to be careful with that a little bit because depending on how you price your stuff. Because you don't want to put it, put the sale price down to a point where if somebody buys a single card, you're losing money on them. I'm a Deus Cho, $3.59. Bought all these blue surge Marvel parallels at the card shop when I was buying out of the boxes there. Uh, see, I think the Sabrina Ionescu I picked up there too. And then four, eight. But it just it 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 just shows some savings right off the bat. They don't have to buy a certain number of things. Maybe they only want one card. Get hyped, Sabrina Ionescu, two sixty nine. That went for, and hopefully, you know, they don't just buy one card. Hopefully, they'll buy, since it's a savings on each card. Hopefully, they'll buy a, a few different ones, and you can do a little better that way. We got a Ninja Turtle sticker, three twenty eight. This sale's kind of an interesting one because I actually sold a. Um, Ninja Turtles card to this buyer a little bit ago and I accidentally sent him the wrong one. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, you can return it, I'll refund you or I'll send out the other one, whatever. And he said, actually, there's a bunch of other Ninja Turtles cards I want, will you just give me a deal on some other cards? And I said, sure. So he's just going to keep the other card at the price he paid. There we go, Bebop and Rocksteady sticker. And I actually ordered a whole bunch of other Turtles cards, as you'll see here. You can, a lot of times, if, you, if you're good at it and you do it right, you can turn a uh, potentially negative situation, you know, I sent them the wrong card, it's my fault. Uh, you can turn that into a positive just by trying to work with your buyer a little bit. Now, did I give him a little more discount than I normally would? Yeah, of course. He just took a card that he didn't even actually order and paid for it, paid full price for it. So sure, I'm going to add a discount. Plus, I knew he was going to buy multiple cards. I knew they weren't going to be um, promoted, so I wouldn't have promoted fees. So he bought this. love these cards, these sell cards. This is a uh, foot soldier. And then he also bought Bebop. Rock, this is Rocksteady. So he bought a couple of sell cards, and then he got this um, Raphael one and then a few other of the older turtles love turtle stuff I, I buy any turtle stuff i can find 10 12 3 so this one's a little out of order here you need to take one out to get to the back cards that's that's a trick that i use a lot in these drawers 629 6 there we just got another sale so we're definitely heating up um, I'm having between yesterday and today I've had a lot of a lot more sales than I have in the last probably week or so 29.6 here we go I think I have a few cards out of here so I need the Terra drone there we go and then I need the what is this one the triple threat Think is what this is number 40 let me see which one card is this yeah triple threat 
and then I need um, sticker which is out of this same one I need a what sticker do I need let's see here this guy Tatsu and then a couple out of the five bag so just have to pull the previous bag it's kind of nice bunch of stuff all out of the same bags gotta love that a little, little quicker and easier to to operate nope that's not the right bag is it six nope ten sixteen i'm in the wrong date here so i lied it wasn't as easy as i thought i thought it was the bag before it because it was bag five but it's from a different date okay so we have to get to ten sixteen bag five um so yeah i think just doing a flat out discount across your entire store is a pretty smart move it's this one here i have a whole bunch of turtles cards that i need to list yet i was kind of holding off because the base cards aren't as strong as sellers um but now i don't have that many listed anymore except for the main characters which of course they sell 10 12 5 Got a couple more of those little cell cards. 10, nope, that's 10, 11. 10, 12, oh, I'm back in that, that last bag again. Um, let's see, I need, there he is. And then this one is that. Put the hands up, there we go. So I have two turtle little cells left. I'll try to find some more of those, I love those cards. They're not easy to find. The only store around me that carries them is this store in the mall. Um, and I bought out what they had. I might just have to order a box online or something. All right, 11, one, big five. And another one of these Marvel ones. We need Vision. I think all these Marvel ones go to Bun Buyer at least. There he is, Vision. We bought them all in separate transactions. Very doesn't happen real often, but I do get that still sometimes. See, so the other thing you can do is just try to list some other items. List some things maybe you have around your house that don't normally have, you know, a hot market time. But fourth quarter is good for selling just about everything on eBay. That would be considered a gift for someone. To try to, uh, you know, if you got some stuff laying around that you'd like to move and you haven't done it, here he is, Kenny Stills. I don't know why this even got listed, but it's old. Just a base score, 2016 Kenny Stills for a dollar. Nice. So try that. Try to list a bunch of other stuff and see how it does. Um... And take advantage of the, the the time of year for that stuff and that's the other thing make sure you're uh, listen list 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 that one's not skewed so i'll skip that one uh list 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 keep listing stuff keep buying stuff keep listing stuff um, even though it's more the sales type season versus the um where is he here he is aj duhay 1978 this is a dolphins buyer so all these cards are dolphins players um, but i think that there's just so many people trying to sell stuff this time of year for obvious reasons that i think you want to make sure you keep listing uh have, as heavily as you can because that's going to help keep you, you know, live in searches and things like that. Um, you know, once you get a sale, maybe message your buyer or send your buyer a coupon right away. Try to get some additional sales. Especially if they're maybe not a regular customer of yours. To try to see if, hey, is there anybody else on your list that you want to buy for? Jim Mandich. A 77 tops dolphins card. 
or find out what else they're looking for, you know. Oh, hey, I also have a, you know, because you might have some not regular card shoppers, a couple more non-skewed there, um, that are buying from you and say, hey, I did this last year. I had a buyer that wanted um, some vintage Star Wars, some 77 Star Wars cards for, I think it was her husband. And uh, she bought a couple and I said, hey, are there, you know, can I help you with your shopping? And she said, actually, my husband's looking for a bunch of these other Star Wars cards. And she didn't, you know, really know to look them all up or what they were called and things like that. And I had a bunch of stuff. So I, I basically just put together an order for her, made a special listing on eBay. So I made it as easy as possible. And again, it saved me money because I created the listing and sent it to her directly so I didn't pay any promotion fees. Um, you know, everything was done in one transaction so you didn't have any additional costs that way. And uh, she was very happy. I got great feedback from her. Like it just made a lot of sense. So this is probably the one time of year where you can kind of step out of that box a little bit further and try to see if you can help someone who uh, isn't normally going to be a shopper in your store. And then, you know, make sure you send out your information. We've, I've talked a little bit before about advertising and, you know, you should get stickers with your store name on it or business cards or, you know, something that you can... Again, especially buyers who aren't the regular buyer, but they're shopping for someone else. You especially want to send them information on your store because they can pass that along to the person that's actually the customer. Here we go. Prime, Dan Marino. I was just thinking about Dan Marino cards the other day. I'm like, you know what? I haven't had a lot of Dan Marino sales lately. Funny how stuff goes in waves like that. And 16, and here's another Dan Marino card to finish this one off. Other than the non-skewed stuff, I have to go back and pull, of course. Here we go. Proline profile card there. And then back to the Marvel Blue Surge parallels. 11-1, which is going to be down here. 11-1-4. In the back here. I need Viv Vision, the female vision from Marvel Universe. Okay. And once again, I actually remembered this time. I grabbed my my normal scanner catch bin, and that's holding my orders as I as I pull them, and then I'll bring them over to my packing station couple of Griffies. Um, the other thing is, and I, I hate to say this because I would never tell anybody to, you know, give up any holiday or family time, but the other thing is, try to work as much as you can during the holidays. I know that's easier said than done, um, but here we go. These two 89 rookies, uh, commemorative set Kmart set stuff whatever I don't know so both of those for $13.98 pretty good money on those 17 uh, but yeah make sure you're you respond timely to your customers make sure you ship stuff out quickly uh, I have a non-sport Star Wars card I didn't see that very often I wonder if those are that might be back here I have a few ran, just random Star Wars cards left in here that I didn't I think it's in here. Yep, there he is. DJ. Star Wars foil board card. This is good. I'm getting some of this. Some more non skew sales are good. Once they're gone, they're gone. Nothing's ever going back in there. That's what I keep telling myself to make it seem less daunting. 10, 7, bag 2. We got another Freddie Freeman sale. His stuff has been just absolute bonkers. Let's see, where is this? Is this in here? This, this feels like the wrong bag. I think it's in a... Yep, there's two bag, two two number two bags on this date. I doubled it up. And of course I grabbed the wrong one. 
So yeah, stay diligent, answer your customers in a timely fashion. You know, if you if you don't answer them right away, somebody else is going to and likely get that sale, especially if it's for a gift because people are feeling that time crunch, they want to get it done, get that shopping over with, get their purchase done, um, have confidence in you as a seller. Remember a lot of these customers would not be your regular customers so they don't really know who you are. They maybe got your name from the person they're buying for or something like that, but they don't know you or inherently trust you because they haven't done dealt with you before. So be patient with them. Um, stay in good contact, ship stuff quickly. If you're not a top rated seller, this would be the time to, actually you probably should have done that a little bit sooner, but 95 Classics, Jason Kidd rookie, dollar 89. Um, but yeah, try to you know up your up your rating on eBay. Get get more vision. It's it's gonna be this is the time where it's really worth the most to put those efforts in. The fact that you have there's that many more buyers this time of year. All right, we got a little Jeter round ball card. I picked this up at the National. I picked up a few of these. Four ninety nine for that one mini cards the bane of the bane and glory of every card seller it's easy money five bucks for that that's not a bad deal sold a wwe card i just picked this up pretty recently too 11 8 oh boy 11 8 big one um let's see where's eight did I get it all? I did. It is in the drawer. Here I am looking for it in the box and never put it away. I forgot I had uh, a few more dates that I would filled in last week. So I have some more. Here she is. Prism Silver, Sasha Banks. I know Sasha always sells, so I just buy her cards when I see them at the right price. I got $4.99 for that one. WWE stuff has been... I don't have a ton of it, but it's seems to be a good seller right now. All right, I like this one. I always like it when it's the more obscure players that sell. Rick Meyer, rookie gold tops card. 24, 24. I, I took a dollar 67 for this, so barely made anything on it, but basically got them for free in the bulk box buy. And Rick Meyer is not a big seller, so I figured since I had a fish on the hook, it'd be best to just sell it and move on. And it is a, a regular buyer too that bought it. All right, now we need a James Bond card. 326, five. I don't have very many of these left. As a matter of fact, I might be pulling this bag now to reassign these. There he is, Alec Trevelin. I didn't know anything about these actors, but they were in a dime bin at uh, the National, not this year, but the year before. So I bought them all, and most of them have sold. I only have a couple left. This bag is pretty thin, so this is a good example of one that I will pull aside and reassign to a new bag. It's always fun when you sell out a bag. I mean, I didn't technically sell it out. It also helps me with my inventory because to go back and recount your inventory and make sure things are accurate and that kind of thing is really tough. Um, but when I'm redoing bags, that helps me because whatever's left in there, I can you know verify that it's listed correctly or listed at all. Um, and stuff like that and just assign it a new bag. These prestige die cut cards I always thought were really cool. These captain's ones. This is a Stafford. Sold for $350. Bought a couple of those. I got one left in there. Uh, and then maybe doing some shows. You know, finding some other avenues to get some sales is probably a good move. Oh, well, these are still on the... This one's still on the counter. I just listed these. I bought some more Uno's. 1128. 1128. Can't remember. Oh, it's way down there. Oh, geez. So these are bags that I have to um, 
either make space in these boxes for or start to again start getting them in the in the drawer now that i don't have anything up on the on the desk that uh has to be it doesn't look right 11 21 8 is that right this is all match attacks cards 11 20 i think it's 11 21 9 11 21 9 11 28 that is not the right bag number so now we got to find out where it is oh here's 11 21 8 i do have two 11 21 8s so i did it again and numbered them the same oh well as they stall down that becomes not a big deal jalen hurts there it is i love the foils out of these packs so i keep buying them make the money back on the packs just from the foils this sold for seven dollars and 19 cents i mean the packs are five bucks for 60 cards and you get four foils in it and, and i well you'll see in a minute here i've been selling a bunch of the base cards so why not oh, cheap fun lots of different uh players different color combos so there's like parallels if you want to look at them that way two three four so sold a dodgers clear team sticker card um but yeah try some different different avenues you know see if you can you know find a shop in a mall go do some card shows set up some tables at card shows you know do something to to try to get yourself some avenues for some additional sales besides just listing on ebay um it's one of the things i've got set up now i have a um store i'm not going to say who it is but i have a store in in the mall near me that wants to make kid packs has a lot of kids uh shopping in his store i just want an, inex an inexpensive pack they can put together okay i need down here and then 23 here we go um here's some more uno uh i sold a robert spillane spillane i don't even know who that is place for the raiders but that's what's great about this there's a bunch of players who have cards in here that don't really have cards anywhere else here he is spillane and i dropped the bag so i gotta pick that up yeah, let's see where did that go there it is <coughs> um so I basically have a buyer now for all my bulk, you know, commons, I guess is probably still the best way to put it. Um, because I wanted to make sure that I would have a place to, to send some of those. I, I do, you know, dime boxes at shows and that kind of thing, but that's not the best use of my time or, or frankly expense. You know, it costs something to rent the table and got sit there all day all that kind of stuff here it is navigator lambert that sold for two dollars and 99 cents pick these up out of a dime box have another stack of aliens cards to list too so keep working on those as well um this is a non-skewed one but i'm actually going to pull it because i know right where it is so this comes from the rookies and stars fanatic set which is right here Let's see if i can grab this without toppling everything over and it's a Noah Gray rookie card. He just had a huge game with, he plays for, um, oh, here he is. That's crazy. He's a tight end for um, the Chiefs. And Kelsey hasn't been having that great a season. And we all know Mahomes loves tight ends and he's been throwing a lot to Gray. Gray had like three touchdowns, I think, or something, I think this past weekend. I think the theory here is he's the next Kelsey. Uh, Kelsey is getting up there a little bit, whereas this kid just came in in 2021. Nice looking card there, so $4.99 on that one. Yeah, I think it's, it's important to have some other avenues 
try to get some business. 1115. Got another non sport card here. 1115, bag two. Eleven fifteen bag two. Here we go. This is a Spider-Man card. It's got uh, the Green Goblin, I think is his name, on it. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. Yeah, Willem Dafoe is the Green Goblin. Two dollars and ninety-nine cents for that. That would have definitely come out of the non-sport dime boxes. Nice little grab and flip there sold pretty quick so that's always good uh, here's another non skewed one it's this 99 collector's edge gold ingot Favre we'll get to that after here's another this one doesn't have a skew either but I don't have much vintage baseball so I can generally just dig it out real quick so I'll probably just do that here in fact I think they're right here, I only ever bought one small lot of vintage baseball that needs to change, absolutely. I need to have more vintage baseball exposure. It's going to be a focus on my second store as we build it. So stay tuned for more videos on that. I'm at 57,000 listings. Here we go. Hank Sauer. $4.99 I got for that. Um, stay tuned for more of that. I'm going to have the second store um, put a lot of work into that. I'm going to probably wait till after the holidays just to make it easier. Just skipped out of my sales here. Um, so I'm just kind of planning on what I want to do for after the holidays and uh, work on that. 712. I've got another non support of Battlestar Galactica. Um, but I just passed 57,000 listings in my Prime store, so I'm definitely ready for, I will be ready for, here's Battlestar Galactica. It's just a season one promo card, I think. $3.99. I'll be ready to get that one labeled and set up. I have the business policy set up ahead of time. I've got, I've already used the scanner and, and um, done a template because I've already uploaded some cards there. Here's a really old listing back in the first drawer right towards the beginning. Um, let's see, I'll set this down so I can show you. So this is a Dead Zone promo card. Spawn. Here it is. Dead Zone. I had a couple of those. Sold one for $2.99. A little bit lesser known show. So I'm hoping I have 3,000 listings to go. I'm hoping I can get those done. Here's another ESG card out of the set boxes. So we'll dig that out. Uh, Mike Yastrzemski sold for $250. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, in the new year that's, that's going to really kick off. And I'll be able to get quite a bit of growth this year off of that. 22-24. Okay, we need a Donovan McNabb Snapshot Silver card. Let's see if I can find that in here somewhere. There it is. Donovan McNabb with Syracuse. This is from Select Draft. Sold for $2.99. 22 24. Here we go. It's nice selling some a little bit more obscure stuff. That's always good. There's a Pujols card. 7, 4, 2. Alright, so then we've got this Albert Pujols here. July 4th, Big 2. There we go. It should be in here. Bunch of 2006. Top space I had in here. It's all just stuff I scanned. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Got a whole bunch of these. Came out of the big dealer box buyout. Still making a lot of sales out of that. That was a great purchase at 
400 bucks or whatever it was for those 30,000 cards. All right, we got another Uno card. October 7, bag three. October 7, bag three. Okay, I need a McCaffrey for this one. Interesting, haven't been selling a lot of McCaffrey this year with his injuries. Um, sold this pretty cheap though, $1.89. But I love these Uno cards. They've been a great seller for me. As I'm sure I have pointed out. Yeah, so selling during the holiday season is, is not that different. <laughs> Um, in many ways, but then you also have to look at 619, 6. How do I, how do I take advantage of the extra eyes that are on my inventory that normally wouldn't be? I think that's the biggest factor. There we go. I get this Contenders Optic Rogers. Got a big stack of those when I bought a big Rogers base slot. There's a whole bunch of them here left and that's over 299 so let's try to think of what's the extra things i can do that i maybe don't normally do when i have um whoops these extra eyes how can i get something out of that eight one big seven here we go we need a Kiss card for this one. I think it's this one. Yep, that one right there. Put a bunch of Kiss cards for 10 cents at the National. Pulled through quite a few of them already, so just keep working on them. Alright, so I sold that one. $4.49. So those turn pretty nice. Got a couple more ESG set, set ones. Bobby Witt Jr. Sold two of those for nine bucks. Uh, some Olympics cards. 813.7. We'll do that one first. Yeah, and I think it's just a matter of trying to take that buyer and getting something extra out of them. Um, if they don't currently know you know if they don't know anything about cards they don't normally shop from you what can you do to oops you bought them both tori husky is the swimmer but both the base and then there's an insert one up there buyer bought so nice sold out of tori husky stuff all in one shot 12.5 Uh, there it is. Yeah, and that's, I think this is where, like, non-sport cards can really help. They sold a lot more non-sport to non-collectors. Like, just people buying them for someone else than I did anything else. Uh, a Tyreek Hill. 7, 27, 13... Oh, yeah, that's not going to be right. Seven. Seventeen, thirteen, I think is what it is. Put the wrong number on that. Yeah, here's a bunch of the retail stuff. So I just need an elite base. Hopefully I'm smart and I remembered where I actually put it. <laughs> uh, let's see. There it is. Nope. Yeah, that's it. Right there. 2017 Elite. Tyreek. Yeah, make sure you have, you know, your top rated seller and, you know, you want to, the other thing is to make sure you really have all the confidence factors you can possibly have going into it so that um, those who don't know who you are, the buyer's that are coming to you don't normally shop with you can have that same confidence as you know customers who know you 
and make those transactions. Justin Verland or Mini. Love Mini sales. $1.50, but gets it out the door. I'm guessing I didn't hardly pay anything for that. It was probably in my bulk box buy, so pretty easy one to let go. Another Uno card. This one is Patrick Mahomes. And 26.3. These are kind of a weird size, so I am happy that when they sell, because again, just like the minis and other game cards and stuff, it's nice to nice to get them moved. Let's see, where is he now? Come on, Patrick. There he is, Patrick Mahomes. And that's all for three and a quarter. Probably let that go a tad less than I really want to, but again, I paid five dollars for the entire box, which includes the four foils and 56 base cards. The Sonic card just listed a bunch of these 11, 13, 24. Um, let's see. There it is. So I like that. Had these laying around for a while. I bought a few big Sonic lots a while ago and just never really got around to putting them on. Other things kept taking priority. Here we go. Warp of Confusion. $2.99 for that. And I kind of skipped a lot of the these um, like uh, level cards, you know, they're just cards of the different levels in the game, not stickers or anything, because they're they're not as big as sellers, but they do sell, as you see, so I wanted to make sure I got them on there and just didn't, didn't take priority, and then had them stacked up on my desk at one point, and I just decided to just grab the stack of them and get them all listed. Okay, we got another Uno card. We got Mike Evans this time. Hey, where's Mike Evans? So obviously these just being the base and stuff, they don't go for a ton, but you know, if I can get a buck a card and there's 56 cards in that box, plus the foils, most of the foils I've gotten anywhere from three to eight or nine dollars for. Um, and you get four of those in a box, like it's pretty, pretty easy money. And right now there aren't that many um, 23 reading oh, figures. But right now there aren't that many uh, football sets out yet with the new rookies. So it's actually one of the only, that one and uh, the Halloween stuff uh, for a while was a good seller with the rookies because it was like the only thing out for it. This is Bo Jackson right here, 2011 Upper Deck. $2.99 for that one. get these two back in there there we go we got a greg luganis world of sports card 222 seven olympics going out the door here there's another olympic card there he is world of sport got a couple of those one left now So what are your sales strategies? Do you do anything different during the holidays and what you do the rest of the year when you're selling to, um, in most cases, going to be your, your end, end collector, your end buyer um, the rest of the year, whereas now maybe you won't be during the holidays. Is there anything you do to make that different, make that sale a little bit um basket and then i need the three kids oh wait that's a different one yeah that's in 494 some self park cards here didn't think i would uh dig out of these ever ever i mean i always say that and everything i buy ends up selling eventually maybe not as 
well as I thought, or it took a little longer, or whatever, but you always end up selling. I always end up selling whatever I buy, which is good. So I got four South Park cards here for eleven dollars and ninety-six cents. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I would add to there we go. Pepe Le Pew card here. That would add to selling techniques during the holidays. Um, let's see which one is this. Nope. Here it is. Pepe Le Pew. Irresistible Pepe. I had bought those a couple nationals ago because Pepe had been canceled from Looney Tunes cartoons due to his treatment of women. His yeah, his nature uh, wasn't PC enough, so they cut him. And I thought, oh, people are going to buy them, want to buy the cards. Here's another uh, ASG Salvador Perez that sold for two ninety nine. Uh, this one I just listed, so I was pretty excited about this. I got this out of a tin. I found some random um, soccer tins that had messy limited edition cards in them. You were guaranteed a messy limited edition card. And they were on clearance for six bucks a tin. So that was, yeah, here's the messy card that came in. And I bought, there were three tins. I bought all three of them, of course. The messy cards are in nice shape, which is good because sometimes out of those tins, the cards aren't in great shape. Uh, these are a bunch of the inserts and stuff. But I also pulled this Ronaldo, and I sold that for 10 bucks. That was good. I got, you know, almost half my money out of selling that card, which is not even why I bought the tin. But love it. Don't see a lot of soccer stuff. When I see stuff that I know I can do something with, I, I like to buy it. Um, this one I got to dig out. This is an Allen Iverson premium stock. Shimmer or something like that, four dollars and ninety-nine cents. All right, now we've got another one that's in the bag here. Eleven one five. We've got another non-sport, another one of these uh, bullseye here. We got the blue surge parallel. All yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing that I change is I just try to. Um, as far as listings go, I try to do more non-sport. I really want to get the non-sport out there. I tend to sell more of that. I think it's in here. And I do the sports stuff over the little short holiday period. Here we go. Anything with Santa. So we've got this lovely Santa and elves cards here. Bite me a hump. I don't know what that means. Uh, I got your sack of goodies right here, yo, yo, yo. Uh, he's using my YouTube tagline there. Silly. Uh, I got $4 for that one. I try to get some stuff on there that maybe you wouldn't normally sell during the year. Because you have different shoppers. Than you do the rest of the year. Some different shoppers. You'll have some of your regulars, I'm sure. I know I do, but... 22. We're coming up on that on that time. It's getting to crunch time here for uh, the holiday shopping season. Super Bowl XIV. Is it this one? No. Here it is. Nope, that's not it either. XIV. I think it's one of these. I love these action cards, Flare Action. I'm sure I've mentioned it in the past. I must have skipped right over it. Pittsburgh, Los Angeles. Oh, it says Super Bowl on the top. I was looking for it on the bottom of the card. There it is. Right there. And we got, what did we get for that? $1.99. I'll take it. 9, 22, 24, two. Okay. So yeah, weird stuff. You know, stuff like that. Action cards. Here's another ESG. Parker Meadows. Gotta dig that out of the box. Um, let's see. One, one, four. Four. 
love to see some more football sales over the holidays and I'm sure that will pick up quite a bit so I'm excited for that and here's another one from our bulk this spot here we go we need a gold Dion for $4.99 I got some vintage. Some of these are skewed, some aren't. So I'll be really happy when all the vintage is skewed because I spend probably most of my time when I have to dig is spent in there because I very rarely have a buyer buy one vintage card. They're usually buying a few, which I love. That's what I want. Okay, I need a Ron Johnson. Um, so I, I want to make sure that I have as much of that bagged as possible because it's really hard to chase down later. I thought it was Giants, but maybe not. Oh, Giants. What bag is this? Oh, there's two three bags, of course there is. Another one where I doubled up the number. It's got to be in this one. There was a bunch of giants, but that wasn't any of them either. Norm Sneed, nice. There he is, Ron Johnson. We got him. And vintage has to be a big, big focus of mine this upcoming year. Not that, not that it hasn't been a focus already, but even more so. I'm going to try to get a lot of vintage bulk buys. 13.7. As many as I can handle, hopefully. Got a couple of sellers that. Jim Tyre, he's right on top. A nice. couple of sellers that have some stuff for me, or will have some stuff for me, so I'm excited to be able to do some deals with them and get some more vintage in. 2.82. And then do. Uh, Lots and lots of non-sport. Where did that go? There he is. Roy Jefferson Threadskins. Alright, I think after I'm done with this order here, I'm going to end this video. I've got a lot more stuff to pull, but I don't want to make this video two hours long. And you get the gist of it. You'll, you saw a lot of what I was pulling, 814.2, but I have a another 100 orders or so to go. And I don't wanna, like I said, make this video go on forever. Need a pro action. It's gonna be this one here, I think. Yep, that one. Chargers. But yeah, get as much stuff as you can listed. Get contact people. Um, make sure you reply to any customer questions. You're going to get, like I said, potentially more than you normally would just due to some of your shoppers being not the your normal shoppers and not uh, the end buyer or you know buying it as gifts. Try to help as much as you can, and that should increase your sales as well. Okay, two. Got, just got a few more here. Seven, seventeen, seven. There we go. And then, like I said, get through the. Don't don't plan too much going into Terry Bradshaw. That's a nice one. Uh, don't plan too much going into the holidays to do with your store revolutionizing your store you know just get get focus on sales for the holidays and then come back uh after the season after the new year whatever and really focus on your next step i think it's in this one i need a bow stop So 
So my focus in the new year, as long as we're kind of talking about it, will be to finish out my 60,000 listings if I don't get there before the end of the year. And who knows with selling a bunch of stuff, there he is, Bo Scott. Uh, and I don't, like I said, I don't want that to be the focus right now. I just want to pound as many sales as I can uh, in listings, hopefully. They tend to tend to go a bit hand in hand, um, but I really want to focus on on those sales, get a lot of that stuff moved, and then in the new year really focus on. I guess Max McGee. Another random vintage stuck in with some other stuff here, and then my new year will be focusing on the new. Setting up, getting the rest of the new store set up. Three, three again. And finishing out the inventory, the unskewed inventory. And then building the new cabinet. Building the, the new cabinet with uh, cards for the new store. Continuing that growth train. I have a, a lot of inventory from a different 283, right? That's right, isn't it? 283. I bet it's this one. I need a Pro Action card. Pro Action Greg Landry. Man, well, maybe I sold enough out of these. There he is, Greg Landry. Maybe I sold enough out of these two. Now I can consolidate them so I don't have to have the same number. It doesn't quite look like it, though. Um, but here's another one. I need this George. What is it? George Farmer? George Farmer Bears. So yeah, it's kind of I, kind of fun, I think, because uh, Ron Smith. There he is, George Farmer. We got him for the Bears. Because I, I'm kind of at the right spot to end a year. <laughs> um, I'm just about maxed out this store. Um, I've already got the other store kind of built and ready to go. And, and the new year, just kick that off and get stuff, get stuff going. And I'll have a, a pretty easy way to measure how it did. Or how it's doing because I'll have like a the new year mark is kind of a natural mark to start to measure things. There he is, Jim Kick, the Dolphins. He's a Hall of Famer. So I think that worked out pretty pretty nice. Now, I don't know that I'll get exactly where I want to be on the exact end of the year. Because I believe I have a little bit more to do than what I can get done all the way up to uh, the first of the year. But we'll see. Who knows? I, I can work pretty quick too. Buck Buchanan. There you go. So maybe I will be able to... I have a feeling the skewing won't get done. Because I tend to do that as like filler when I have, don't don't have other things I need to do, and I don't feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna have much of that time over the next month. I hope not. I hope I have. I hope it's all sales, and I don't have to um, try to fill the time with growth and other things. This is the time of year where you want you just want all the sales coming. Ed Hargett, quarterback for the Saints. Get that one out the door. And then a number out of the three bag. I need one more. I need Pete Athos. Athos, here he is. With the Giants. And then on to the next stage. We're going to work on... Building out the new store, keeping the current store flush with product, 
Um, adding some higher dollar cards is another kind of project I want to work on. Um, more gaming cards, more vintage, more non-sport. You have all kinds of goals that extend out from there. But getting, there is Fred Bolitnikoff, Raiders wide receiver, Hall of Famer too. 283, we need Spider. 283, and that's going to do it for this one. I think it's this one. Yeah, he's right on the front. First card in the bag, gotta love that. I might be down enough that I can combine the two. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, give me some feedback. Let me know what you think about selling in the holiday season. If it changes anything, if it if it's better, if it's worse. Uh, well, I want to hear from you. But that's it. Thanks again so much for watching. Remember, you can't sell what you don't list. And we'll see you again 